Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 73. Day, day, day 3073, 3000 is to indicate that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 73, we are on page 280, 280, that's right, 3073, I have an error here in my notes, I'm just going to fix it before I forget it here, 3073, that's much better. Okay, so the 3 is there to indicate that we are in the 3rd edition, day 73, we are on page 280. Today we'll deal with the topic of similar triangles. The first problem, problem number 7, is already, already on the blackboard, as you can see. We'll do, prob we'll, we'll do problem number 7, and then 8 and 9, all of those 3 problems, 8, 9, 8, 9, 7, 8 and 9, they all deal with the same concept, similar triangle. Before we look at problem number 7 on the blackboard, let's ask ourselves, what does it mean for two triangles to be similar. What does it mean for two triangles to be similar? That's the question, isn't it? There is a solution. So, what does it mean for two triangles to be similar? When we say that they are similar, what does it entail? Well, here's what's going on. Okay, let's take a look at the, let's, let's let's take a look at a couple of a uh, couple of triangles. This plot a triangle here, like this, and another triangle, like that. Watch what happens. If we are told that this is x degrees, and if we are told that this is also x degrees, and if we are told that this is y degrees, and this is also y degrees. Let's give these sides names so we can talk about them. Let's call the side of this triangle ABC and the side of this triangle PQR. So what's going on here so far is that if, x, if this angle equals that angle, x degrees and x degrees, and this angle equals that angle, y degrees and y degrees, and since some of the triangle, some of the angles in the triangle has to add up to 180, then this angle must also equal that angle. This angle, Z, must also equal that angle because Whatever is left over, if this is x and this is y, whatever is left over is 180 minus x minus y. So they don't have to tell they don't have to tell us that part. They don't have to tell us that this angle equals that part. Once they tell us that this angle equals that angle, that this is x and this is x and this is y and this is y, that in itself is enough to establish that all of the three angles in the two uh, triangles are equal to each other. If that's the case, if that's the case, the triangles are said to be similar. Triangles are said to be similar. And in that case, if the triangles are similar, if the triangles are similar, then so what's the, what's the definition? What does it mean for the two triangles to be similar? It means that the three angles, the three angles, three angles of the two two triangles are equal to each other. Are equal to each other as we just saw as we saw as we just saw if that's the case then what this implies if we if we establish that all three angles in the two triangles are equal to each other and as I already said I'm repeating myself if two of the corresponding angles are equal then third must also be equal if that's the case, and what this implies is that the, all the corresponding sides, if that's the case, then, then all the corresponding sides, corresponding sides are in the same proportion, are in the same proportion are in the same proportion and I left no room at all for myself. So let's erase all of this thing. I don't want to erase the problem, obviously. Let's erase all of this thing. 
so that we can squeeze something here. Okay, so one more time. So here we have a triangle. This is x degrees, this is y degrees. And here we have another triangle. And we are told that this is x degrees and this is y degrees. Which means the third, third, triangle must, third angle must also be equal to each other, obviously. Because whatever is left over is whatever is left over. In both, in both cases, the water, what is left over for the third angle is 180 minus x minus y. So we established that these two triangles are similar. If that's the case, if that's the case, then all the corresponding sides have to be in the same proportion. So what that means is that, here's what it means. What that means is that, for example, uh, if this is 3 and this is, I can't say 3, 4, because 3, 4 would, then the third one would have to be 5 and would have to be right angle triangle. So I'm just going to make something up. Let's say, let's say this, is, this is 5 and this is 7. Then in that case, all we need to know in order to establish what the proportion is, in order for us to establish what the proportion is from one triangle to the next triangle, is just one side in this triangle, just one side. So for example, if they tell us that this is 3, 5, and 7, and if they tell us that this side is 21, then that's all we need. This tells us that this triangle is the exact same triangle as that one. The only difference is that we have put this triangle, think of this triangle as putting it in a copy machine, and we have enlarged it to 300%. This triangle is exact, this triangle is this triangle, three times the size. It's been blown up, it's been enlarged to three times the size. The proportion here is one to three. So if we are told that this is 21, if we are told this is 21, then it's very easy. If that's the case, then this side must be three times three. You see, because this is three. And this side must be five times three, because this is five. That's all. That's all it is. That's, that's, that's what the fuss is about. That's what the fuss is about. Now let's do the problem on the blackboard. Now that we understand it, it's very simple. So, we have two triangles. Let's draw the two triangles, P, Q, R, and X, Y, Z. P, Q, R. They don't have to be drawn in a particular way. X, Y, Z. Now, having said that, you have to go in order. Listen very carefully. This is the part that's very important. Okay, listen very carefully. The tradition, the tradition, the convention, the, 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 the norm in geometry is that you must name your vertices either going clockwise or anti-clockwise. But you can you can do you can do both of them in the same problem or you can't go willy-nilly. In other words, in other words, it will make no sense. This is very important. It will make more because you see they don't give us a triangle. We have to plot, we have to draw them ourselves. It will make no sense to say let's call this triangle PQR and let's call this triangle XYZ. Let's call this triangle XYZ and just go XYZ. No, we can't do that. Because here, XYZ, I'm going counterclockwise, anti-clockwise. Here we're going clockwise. We can't do that. Do you understand? Also, we can we cannot simply go even willy-nilly, even more willy-nilly. Actually, there's only three sides, so we can't do any more. There we go. So P Q R, we're going clockwise, that's the norm, that's the tradition. So XYZ. Do you understand? Simple thing, but too, important thing to keep in mind. P Q we are told is six. P R we are told is four. X Y we are told is nine. There we go, we're done. And we don't have to worry about it. They are similar triangles. We are told that, which means this angle equals that angle, this angle equals that angle, and of course the third angle will also be equal. What's the proportion here? The proportion is, it goes from 6 to 9. How do we go from 6 to 9? 9 is simply 1 and a half times 6. 1 and a half times 6 is 9. And what they are asking here is, what's the side XZ? XZ is right here. This is 4. So it is simply 4 times 1 and a half, that's what it is, 4 times 1 and a half is 6. Because 4 times 1 is 4 and half of 4 is 2. Half of 4 is 2 is 6, that's what it is. That's what all the fuss is about. Let's do one more. And this time, this time they're going to give us similar triangle in a little bit different way. Let's, let's, put, the, let's put the problem on the blackboard first. Number 8. Number 8. It says, what are the lengths of the sides? What are the lengths of sides NO and OP 
in triangle NOP and they give us a picture so we're going to put the picture on the blackboard here the problem that we just finished the problem that we just finished number seven it will appear in the exam as an easy question because it is an easy question the one we are about to do will appear as a medium question you understand let's consider medium what we are about to do and you will see why it's considered medium because it involves one extra step so here the two triangles are put together. They are, they are similar triangle, but they are put together like this. This is N. We are told this word is, vertex is uh, N. This is O and OP. We are told that this is Q and this is R. What else we are told? Is there anything else we are told? We are told that this part is from N to Q is 10. This is 40. And we are further told that Q to R is 24. But they don't tell you here in the previous problem, they actually told us they told us that triangles PQR and XYZ are similar. Here, they don't tell us that. So, how do we know they're similar? Well, we have to establish that ourselves. So, here we go. Here we're going to establish. So, we're dealing with two triangles. Two triangles that we're dealing with. Two, two triangles that we're dealing with are NOP, NOP, and PQR. P. Q, R. We could, have, we could have done it just here, but I wanted to make sure that you understand it. So, as long as two of the angles in the, are equal to each other, the corresponding equals, then keep, remember, then third angle must also be equal. Well, we are told that this is right angle. Well, if that's right angle, and we must also be told that the other one is also right angle, otherwise we can't go. There we go. We are told that this is also right angle. There we go. You see? So that's the first angle. This angle equals that angle. They are right angles. Where is the second angle that are equal to each other? The second angle that is equal to each other in the two triangle is the angle that they share. The angle P. They share that. This, this angle they share right here. You see? This angle belongs to both NOP and it belongs to PQR. So this angle is equal, this angle is equal to that angle and this angle is right angle in both of them. Therefore the third angle must also be equal to each other. The two triangles are similar. Now that we've established that, we can make a progress. If they're similar, the side must be proportional. Let's see what we can do. Side must be proportional. And we're given some of the information about the length of the sides. We know what N to P is. We know what, or we don't know what N to O is. That's what we have to figure out, N O. So let's set it, set it up as a proportion, N to O over N O over N P. You see the ratio of these two sides, the ratio of these two sides in that triangle must equal the ratio of the other two corresponding sides. They have to be corresponding. The corresponding side to sides to N O, corresponding side to N O, and the smaller triangle is Q R. You have to pay attention there. And the corresponding side to NP, NP is the bottom here, the corresponding side here of the smaller triangle will be QP. There we go. There are four items here. As long as we know three of them, we can find out the fourth one. So let's call this NO, the one that we're trying to find out, the unknown quantity, let's call it X. Because that's what the tradition dictates. So N to O, we're going to call it X, that's our unknown. N to P, how much is N to P? Well, right here, N to P. N to P is 10 plus 40. 10 plus 40. How much is Q to R? For right here, Q to R, Q to R is 24. Q to R is 24. How much is Q to P? Q to P is 40. There we go. Let's cross multiply. If we cross multiply, we're going to get 40 times P. Well, let, actually, I'm not going to do that. Let's just bring let, let's just bring the 50 to the other side. This is 50. Let's multiply both sides by 50. This 50 is going to go away and we have our x. x is going to equal 24 times 50 over 40. If we divide, if we divide top and bottom by 10, zeros are going to go away. Now let's divide top and bottom by 4. 4 is going to disappear and 24 becomes 6 because 6 for the 24. And there we go, we have our answer, 6 times 5. 6 times 5. n to o, n to o, where do you go? n to o, is 31. That's it. We found it. Is that the end of it? Oh, we have to find O to P. Blast it. 
we have to find O to P. O to P, O to P is the hypotenuse. So we're done with the small triangle. We're done with the triangle QRP. We needed it to find out this side. We have done that. Now we have to find out O to P, which is the hypotenuse of the larger triangle, outside triangle. So let's erase all the things that we don't need so it, it doesn't confuse us. It's gone. We don't need it anymore. It's gone. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Here what we know is that this side is 50. This side from N to P is 50. Let's put down 50 here. N to P is 50. Question is, what is this side? Let's call it Y. We can't call it X because we used the symbol X to represent something else in the same problem. So let's solve it. Now all you have to do is apply the Pythagorean theorem. A simple application of Pythagorean theorem will see us through. But do not be hasty. Do not be, do not be uh, unattentive. Don't just assume that this is 30 and this is 50, this got to be 40. That would only have been true, that would only have been true if this were 40, then this would have been 50. Because in that case we have 3, 4, 5 triangle. In a 3, 4, 5 triangle, obviously 5, the side that is longest, the longest side face is the right angle here. So three, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, but that is, that, that is not what we have. O to P is not... It's not, so people are going to get confused, they see 50 here, so they say, well, we got 50, we got 50, we got 30, so this must be 40. No, that would be wrong, that would be silly. That's the lazy man's answer, it's the wrong answer. It cannot be 40. For one thing, it cannot be 40, because how can the longest side in the triangle be less than 50? This side we are told is 50, so whatever this is, O to P obviously has to be more than 50, because it's the longest side in the triangle. How do we know it's the longest side in the triangle? Because this face is the biggest angle in the triangle. It faces 90 degrees. Let's find it, shall we? As we said, simple application of Pythagorean theorem would do the job. And the Pythagorean theorem tells us that the square of the hypotenuse, which we are calling y, has to equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. 30 squares and 50 squares. You see? 30 squares is 900. How do we know that? Because 3 squared is 9 and then 2 more zeros. 5 squares is 25 and 2 more zeros because it's 50. 50 times 50 you're going to get 2 zeros. 2500 plus 1000 would have been 3500 so it's 3400. 3400 which I'm going to write that as 3400 and you'll see that in the second y. And this is y squared. We're not interested in finding the y squared. We're interested in finding the y. So let's take a square root of both sides. Now we know square root of 100 is just 10 square root of 100 is just 10. So we can bring out the 10 and square root of 34. And square root of 34 will remain square root of 34 because 34, if you if you are able to see right away, 34 is a product of two prime numbers, two prime factors. It cannot, we cannot do anything. We cannot take out anything outside. It's just 2 times 17. So writing that as square root of 2 times 17 would be damn silly. It's just 10 times the square root of 34. It is 10 times the square root of 34. But notice that the longest side in the triangle is indeed more than 50. How do we know that? Because square root of 34, the square root of 34 is going to be slightly less than 6. Slight, that's how we write it, slightly less than 6. How do we know that? Because square root of 36 is 6 times 10. So this y that we're looking for is going to be about 60. It's going to be about 60. Actually, a little less than 60. But that's not the point. The point here is not that it's a little less than 60. The point is, it is more than 50. It has to be more than 50 because it's the longest side in the triangle. And it is the longest side because it faces the biggest angle in the triangle. It is a right angle triangle. The biggest angle in the right angle triangle is 90 degrees. It faces 90 degrees. It has to be the longest side. The third problem they tell us, give us, again is presented a little bit differently. Let's take a look at it. Number 9. Number nine, but I need a little break, if you will, indulge me that luxury. <coughs> that was most kind of you. Let's do number nine. Let's put the picture first. Here, we are given three triangles put together, put together in one picture, three triangles. Let's 
from here to here let's break it into three equal parts because because they have to be equal so just eyeball it do you understand just eyeball it don't be sloppy don't be sloppy this is fine what I did is fine but you cannot go it's going to look horrible if I were sloppy and simply say no that, that, that doesn't look like three, three equal sides it doesn't have to be exact you can eyeball it but you have to be reasonable There we go. So let's, let's put it here. And if it bothers you, you can take out this extra part. This vertex is A, then we have B, then C, then D, then E, then F, and finally G. What else we are told? What else we are told? What we are told? What else we are told? Is this part. It's the same idea, it's the exact same idea as we did just a second ago, the previous problem. As long as we can establish that two of the angles in the court, two of the corresponding angles are equal to each other, the third angle has to equal it. Third angle also has to equal. So here we are told, this is something we are told, it is given in the picture. If you pay attention, if you look at the picture carefully, they are told they are telling us that all of these angles are 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees, it is given. This is 90 degrees, and this is 90 degrees. Second thing we have to understand, second thing we have to understand, I'm going to show you here. Let's draw two parallel lines. We no longer need this thing. This is problem number, it is a problem number nine. I should erase that. It is problem number nine. Now let's look at two parallel lines, BF and AG. Here's our BF. You see, BF and AG. AG. If you have two parallel lines, listen very carefully, if you have two parallel lines and if you intersect that, those two parallel lines with a third line like this, this line that we're going here is our AD. This is line AD. Don't worry about the fact that A appears here also and here also. If it bothers you, you can put A here if you like. This is A. This is AD. What do you notice? If that's the case, then this angle has to equal that angle. We just establish that this angle equals that angle. And similarly, if we draw one more parallel line, again, these three angles, let me see if I can find a different one, all of these three angles are equal to each other. This angle equals that angle equals that angle. This angle right here is equal to this angle and this, ang this angle. There we go. We just establish that these three triangles are similar because all of the three interior angles, corresponding angles, are equal to each other. Therefore, they are similar triangles, and if they are similar, they must have a fixed proportion. Let's begin our job now. Let's begin our job. Let's see what we can do. Is there anything we are told? Oh, we are told. We are told that AB, AB, of course, AB, AB, we are told that AB is equal to BC, which is equal to CD. What does it tell us? It tells us that if you look at the triangle ADG, ADG, and if you look at the triangle CDE, CDE, and if I tell you that C to D, let's say I'm just going to make something up, if I tell you that C to D is 17, if, if you're told that C to D is 17, then A to D must be 3 times that amount. This must be 51. Why? Because these three sides are equal to you. A to B is equal to B to C, which is equal to C to D. We are told that, which means the proportion here is 3 to 1, from the large angle to the smallest one, C, D, E. What about this guy? It's going to be 2 to 1. You see? For B, D, F. B, D, F. Think of this as 2 inches. From here to here is 2 inches, and from here to here is 3 inches. So the ratio is here is 2 to 3 or 3 to 2, depending on how you set it up. Let's begin, shall we? So, we just established that the proportion is 3 to 1 compared to the biggest triangle and the smallest triangle. Proportion is 3 to 1. Let's see what we can do. So, keep that in mind and regard that from the fact that AB is equal to BC, which is equal to CD, we are told. We also know that area 
of the triangle CDE. CDE, which is the smallest one, we are told that the 42. The question is, what's the area of triangle ADG? Now, depending, depending on how this question is presented in the exam, because now in this new exam, when I say new exam, it has been, it's been, it has been around for several years now, well, actually, they no longer even use the word revised in it. I just noticed it. I just noticed it. In the first edition and the second edition of this, when I mean, the GRE, they changed the format of the GRE. So you don't have to worry about this thing. It's, been, it's an old story now. It used to say revised GRE. And one of the revisions that this, this new version of the GRE that I'm holding in my hand, which is the third, third edition here, in the first and second edition, as I said, the cover used to say revised GRE. One of the changes that, that, that they made was that in the old day, in the olden days, the, the answers were only multiple choice answers and they were quantitative comparison questions and that's all there was. Now we have a new type of animal that we have to encounter. Actually, there are two types of animals we have to encounter in the new GRE. I'm digressing big time now. One are the open-ended questions where there are, there are no answers. We just have to come up with the answers and give it to them. They tell you how old is Michael and we have to tell her Michael is 47 years old. There is a fourth type where they give you several answer choices, depending on the problem. Sometimes as many as 10 answer choices. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And our job is to mark all the answer choices that are correct. So if you establish that the answer choice A is correct and B is correct and H is correct, and if it turns out that if it turns out that E was also correct, then you will get zero credit for it because you missed the E. That's the fourth type. But that's not what I'm getting at here. So if it's presented as an open-ended question, then of course you have to give the answer. What is the, what is, what is the, what is the area of ADG? But if it happens to be a multiple choice answer, multiple choice questions, then in that case, will you be able to tell me what is going to be the sucker's answer here, the most popular wrong answer here? Would you, would you be able to tell me what that is? The most popular wrong answer here, as I said before, is the lazy man's answer. Lazy man does not want to do all the work. He just realizes that it's three to it's, it's three times as large. The big triangle is three times as large. We are told that the area of the small one is 42. So he just assumes that the area of the small one, the area of the large one must be three times as much. And he's done. And that is going to be one of the answer choices. That is going to be one of the answer choices. Let's do the proper work, shall we? Let's do the proper work. So, area of ADG, we're going to pick up from here. Area of ADG equals one half base times height. Of course, nothing new about it. One half base. We took, we're dealing with now ADG. So forget this part. We just have to remember that it's 42. We'll get to that in a second. How much is the base in ADG? ADG. We're talking about ADG. We're talking about the largest triangle. Do you understand? The base here is A to G. And the height is going to be G to G to D. But we also know, but we also know that A to G, this length here, A to G, is three times the length of C to E. How do we know that? Because they tell us that. They tell us that these three sides are equal to each other. They tell us that AB, which is why I didn't erase it, AB is equal to BC, which is equal to CD, which means A to D is three times the length of C to D. Or A to B, A to D is three times the length of A to B. Or A to D is three times the length of B to C. You get the idea. If this side if the, of the large triangle is three times C to D, then this side, C to E, must also be one third of the side of that one. That's where we get A to G is going to be three times C to E. Similarly, when we get to D, similarly when we get to D to G, this length D to G, this length right here, is three times this length is three times the length of D to E. As you can clearly see from the picture, three times D to E. Let's 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 put these three together. Three times three is nine. Three times three is nine. So we get nine times half times CE 
times d. Now we have one, one, and a, one half CE, C to E, one half base of the smallest triangle times DE, which is the height of the smallest triangle, and we know what the area of this triangle is. They tell us what the area of this triangle is, let me, which is why they told us what the area of this triangle is. The area of this triangle is 42. This quantity that we see here is 42, so the answer is 9 times 42. The area of ADG is 9 times 42, and how much is 9 times 42? Well, let's find out up here. How much is 9 times 42? Well, 9 times 42 is simply going to be 420, 420, which is 10 times 42. We, we, don't, we, don't want 10, we don't want 10 42s, we just want 9 42s. If you just want 9 42s, but don't cry about it, don't whine about it, just take away 1 42. Just 1 42, do you understand? So now we have 420 minus 42, 420 minus 20 would have been 400, another minus, another 20 would be 380. We, want, we don't want to subtract 40, we want to subtract 42, so it's 378. 378, that's the answer. And that was the end of problem number 9. As I said, all of these three problems that we just saw dealt with the same concepts, 7, 8 and 9. Tomorrow, in the next video, we'll deal with problem number 10 and 11. Problem number 10 and 11 deal with the concept of rectangle and a parallelogram, which is a similar concept, rectangles and parallelogram. The day after tomorrow, we'll do problem number 12 and 13, which deal with circles. And finally, we'll do problem number 14 by itself, which deals with what is known as a rectangular box. There is problem number 14 there. We're going to label that as 14A, and we're going to do one more bonus problem, 14B. So, one more time. Tomorrow, on day number 374, we'll do 10 and 11, 375. Day after tomorrow, we'll do 12 and 13. And two days after that, we'll do the very last problem, and then we'll be done with geometry. And we'll be able to move on to the most important part of the exam. I say most important because that's the area where I find a lot of people have trouble with, which is the data analysis. We'll begin that in three days' time, after three days. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.